As Void Woken attacks go, you think that one was particularly devastating. The great city of Arx may be finally ready to fall. Arcs fall over my dead body. This city won't go down without a fight from me. Learn the right to sing a tale. Yeah. Paladins march on the blacks and reds. Hurrah, hurrah. You saved my best paladins by the skin of their teeth. The lads are brave, but they're no match for Voidwoken, especially right off the back of chasing down magisters. I tell you, they'll be chanting your name in the mess hall tonight. Of course. You whistled up a war owl to warn us about the Magisters, right? Lord Kem mobilized all us paladins against them that very hour. Could be worse. At least Arx is now under the control of Lord Kem. After your communique, he instigated investigations into every Magister in the city. We're sure it's the collusion between the Magisters and the Black Ring that drew the Voidwoken here. To think they blamed all sorcerers. The only question remaining is why? Why? The Magisters have a lot to answer for. Those left alive, that is. Sometimes good people do bad things, and there are consequences to every action. She eyes you curiously, eyes narrowing in her hard face. Are you serious? You won't find the leader of the Magisters walking in the open in arcs. This is Paladin territory now. But check in with Lord Kem. He's conducting an investigation of all the Magisters in the barracks. He might know something about her whereabouts. Take care. I doubt this is quite the city you were expecting to find. House the traitors from their beds. Hurrah! Hurrah! Illusions played, we shall prevail. We'll earn the right to sing a tale. Paladins march on the blacks and reds. Hurrah! Hurrah! House the traitors from their beds. Hurrah! Hurrah! Lucian's blade, we shall prevail. We'll earn the right to sing a tale. We shall prevail. We'll earn the right to sing a tale. She turns to you, and suddenly you are deep in her soul. Tendrils of anger and pain weave around you, through you, as you wander the chambers of her memories. You are a Magister, and proud. You did what you could, and you did what was right, and now it is over. The world and its problems are no longer your concern. Now you may leave. Illusion's blade, we shall prevail. We'll earn the right to sing a tale. Great to have your skills on board back there. You're a handy friend to have.
First, we were chasing off Magisters, then Voidwalken, then Magisters, then... Look, it's been a long one. Maybe I'll just enjoy my drink, if you don't mind. Captain Oro will be more useful to you than me. A wave of sadness rolls off the spirit, sadness mixed with betrayal. The Magister was stabbed in the back by one they'd known as a friend. Thank you for your help, Traveller. The city is open. The streets are safe for now. Paladins march on the blacks and reds. Hurrah! Hurrah! House the traitors from their beds. Hurrah! Hurrah! When Lucian's blade he shall prevail, to learn the right to sing a tale. That's a good word for it. Magisters. Void woken. Never would have drawn the dots that way. But ignore me. Captain Orell's the source of good information around here. The rest of us can only speculate. I didn't get the chance to thank you earlier. Without your help against the Void Woken, things could have been mu- Take care. I doubt-
The faint spirit's voice is little more than a whisper echoing inside your mind. No. No. Treacherous paladins. There can be no divinity in an order that betrays its own. The spirit suddenly looks up at you, eyes wide and accusing.
The spirit laughs. A terrible, cynical guffaw that says that the world is an evil place where no one is safe. But inside the laughter, there's shame. The Magister knows that he sinned and suspects that his death was deserved. I salute you, Monster Slayer. That a hero like you would arrive on Lucian's day, well, it gives me hope. Well, we're glad you were here. Seems the Magisters have been dicing with dark magic. You'd have them to thank if there were any left. Many fled. Those who didn't, died, or ended up in a cell. On Lucian's day, you'd better believe it. City's a bit of a mess, it's fair to say, but the worst has passed. We'll have the place cleaned up in no time. Between the Void Woken and the arrest of the Magisters, we've seen more than a few casualties, but the city herself is intact. We'll mourn our dead and rebuild. Arx persists. She looks at you derisively and spits on the ground, close enough to your boot to make her point. If she is, Lord Kem will want to know. Kem commands the city now. Stay safe. You killed the Void Woken. This city needs more like you. Yes. Good find.
The spirit of a Magister mimes something, unaware of his own demise. He seems to be securing a ship's gangway onto the side of the dock. You snap to attention as she descends from the Lord Dread, Dallas herself. If only your parents were still alive to see this, they'd be so proud. A flicker of movement catches your eye, something alongside the ship, beside the water's surface, a writhing mass of huge tentacles. You reach for your weapon. The spirit of a woman gazes up at something looming high above. Her face is a mask of terror. She jumps in front of the echoed impression of her since-fled child. A huge, unseen force suddenly slams her into the ground, flattening her form into a puddle. Rubbish. The spirit of a dwarf cowers behind some rubble. One of her legs is suddenly yanked backwards, and she's hauled upwards into the air. The spirit of a paladin lurks near some cargo at the edge of the dock. You do your best to remain inconspicuous, observing the scene from behind some barrels and crates stacked near the water's edge. The Lord Dread looms ahead of you. Dallas herself descends the gangway, Freedman following at a distance. You need to report this to Lord Ken. The traitors are here. It's only when you try to sneak away that you realize something has curled itself around your ankle, a powerful tentacle. It pulls you towards the water. The spirit of a dock worker thrashes about, trying to shake something off of his back. The spirit of a woman throws phantom rocks in a desperate attempt to stave off unseen threats. The spirit makes a weak attempt to free himself. It's no good. An avalanche of further spectrum. The statue reaches to the bottom, drops out. Did you know Malady taught me how to sneak out of here, even though we're in the Hall of Echoes? So I can still get some things for you, if you want. Of course. Told you I would, didn't I? How can I help? I'll do what I do best. Hold. It's a city at a crossroads. It's from arcs that the do not, however, go with honor.
I have died once before. I would have preferred a more discreet arrival in Arx myself. I am still a fugitive after all. I was stationed here for a short I heard a rumor once. You always bring me to such wonderfully destructive places. I'll never find somewhere quiet to settle down at this rate. This place? No. Arx is clock. You must truly savor my company, Godwoken. Something you wanted? Would you rush perfection? It will be ready. Advice? I'm afraid not this time. I tell you to not do anything I wouldn't do. But in truth, that isn't a wise mantra for most to follow. Like to take a look at what I've been working on? Go on. Hmm. The destination pyramid doesn't answer the call. Is something blocking it? You killed the Void Woken. This city needs more like you. You're a hell of a You warrior. have my thanks, monster killer. We need all the help we can get. I blame Alexander for this. Mm. 
With the Magisters gone, this will be the end of the Void Woken attacks, I hope. When a sorcerer uses source, the Void Woken come, so they say. But the Magisters have been dealing in darker magic. The Void Woken came bigger and more deadly. But the Magisters are done now. Take care, friend. People will be happy to see the likes of you here helping out, that's for sure. Hold here, Quercus. I need a moment with our friend. Shield, we are about to enter the belly of the beast, to cross a threshold past which there may be no hope of return. There's every chance the servants of the great Acorn will skin you alive, frying your bones and boiling your eyes. You could suffer most terrible. I am getting to the point, Quercus. The point is, the path ahead is dangerous. I have watched you defeat monsters, villains, and a surprising number of inanimate objects. But your greatest challenge yet lies before you. I do not know what lies ahead, but the Great Acorn is almost here. I can feel it in my fur. The forces of evil will throw everything they have against us, but I need more time to finish my research. You have been a good shield, and an excellent friend. Quercus and I both believe you can buy us the time we need. I know you will. The world might be filled with murderous giants, but at least some of them are worth saving. Now, it will take more than Quercus's ferocity and my wit if you're going to survive. You need power, and I think I have just the thing. After our last little escapade with your Void Woken, I examined the corpses you left behind. They were imbued with dark power. I believe I... Sorry, Quercus believes, and I concur, that this magic can be used for light as well as darkness. Here, try this. The squirrel lays his hand on you, and a strange feeling ripples through your body. A sense of power. Your mind opens to the possibilities of new magic. Now, how do you think it feels, Quercus? Of course you do. What greater power could there be than knowledge? Granted, the recipe you know could be a little darker than what you're used to. It would harness the power of those that you've defeated. A grim art. But if you need proof that grim arts can lead to marvelous things, you need only look at Quercus. Now you have all the power you need. You were a wonderful shield as we fled. But we are not running anymore. Now you must become the Axe. Go, my friend, and lay waste to the forces of the Acorn. Hack them to pieces, snap their spines, and burn their eyes, and... <clears throat> and Quercus says, good luck. i 
covered with corpses. Never thought I'd see the day. The paladin hocks a gob of spittle onto the burning corpses of silent monks. The saliva sizzles momentarily and is gone. The silent bastards burn well, tis true. We paid a price. Let her pour Roycestern with them. His screaming haunts me still. Once more, she spits on the burning corpses. The paladin wistfully hums a tune. You recognize the air. Smoke gets in your hair. He stops humming, gives you a sideways look. He rolls his eyes and turns back to the flames. That was Rosewood's favorite song, and Rosewood's dead. You didn't know Rosewood. Leave his favorite song alone. Rosewood's dead, and these are the monsters that did it. Don't be sorry on my behalf. Be sorry for Rosewood and his wife. He was a good man, and she'll feel his loss. It'll haunt her for the rest of her days. We'll mourn him as we mourn all our own. If we're not careful, we'll burn the world. I'll say that. The spirit burns with rage at the carnage wrought on arcs. Rage for the Void Woken, rage for the Magisters, and rage too for himself and his fellow paladins for failing to see the danger until it was too late. The statue looms over arcs, hands reaching as if trying to claw above the charnel stench. Though her eyes are blinded to the horrors at her feet, a single tear drips onto your face from beneath her blindfold. The tear is ice cold on your fingertips. You watch, but she cries no more. Found something.
A pale young man gazes at the square, seemingly lost in his thoughts. His face and clothes are daubed in what appears to be red paint. Nearby, a canvas sits upon an easel. I didn't just see it, I witnessed it. Now I must preserve it upon canvas for the generations to come. He nods, a faraway expression on his face. The great schism of the divine order and the ruination of arcs. This will be my masterpiece. Hmm. I usually only display completed works, but, well, this painting's raw power is already plain to see. Here, feast your eyes. He gestures to the canvas. It's completely covered in the same shade of red, layer after layer. It's sodden, dripping onto the cobbles. I am an artist. I do not do vanity commissions. Red is the only shade that matters. Life and death, true passion from within the artist. He tugs back the sleeve of his tunic to reveal a blood-soaked cloth bandage around his wrist. No, I must continue. What would my father say if he was still alive to see me now? He was the finest painter of his generation, and he used his own blood for his masterwork. The final panel of The Sacrifice of Lucian. For the most part, a copy can be seen at the Great Cathedral, here in Arx. I visit frequently, for inspiration. But the original panel, the one that my father used his blood to depict Lucian's final sacrifice, was given to Lord Kem a long time ago. He keeps it locked away somewhere in that mansion of his. A masterpiece like that should be on public display for all to see. Self-preservation is a petty concern. I must put the spiritual above the corporeal. I must finish. The spirit of an older man observes the nearby painter. He tut-tuts to himself. That poor boy is wasting his time walking upon well-trodden paths. I thought I raised him better than that. Did you tell him what you thought of his little picture? Unfortunate, isn't it? He isn't without talent, but he never overcame the fact that he was my son. Of course, my finest work. I drew upon everything I had for that piece, all of my skills, my experience, why, there's even my own blood and sauce on that canvas. They are part of a private collection now, Lord Kem's. Perhaps he'll grant you a viewing, but I doubt it. There's a reproduction on display at the cathedral. Not the same as viewing the original, of course, but it gives the great unwashed something to pray for. Of course I am. I painted the greatest works of art that Arx has ever seen. The Sacrifice of Lucian. My opinion is the only one that matters. The red splattered young man paces the square once again in a state of reverie.
Ark is still a free city. Trouble lizard. Just, just leave me alone. I heard that the, those bloody paladins are the only reason why any of your lot can still show your faces around here, lizard. We're good people in arcs. We don't want your kind. You're not another bloody pilgrim, are you? The city's swarming with those tight fisted bumpkins as it is. I don't trust those paladins an inch. They don't give a damn about common folk. I hope the Magisters return soon. Hello. New to Ark Self. It's quite the sight, even after those bloody paladins are through with ransacking it. I heard that the paladins killed unarmed Magisters, didn't even let them surrender. Not too loud. What do you think the Paladins would do to us if they heard you going wrong like that? Arx is still a free city, last time I checked. Keep those grubby mitts of yours away from me, dwarf. I wouldn't side too closely with the Paladins if I were you, dwarf. They might have gotten the drop on the Magisters for now, but it won't last. It can't. Please, you've got to help me. My wife, they want to kill her. She didn't do anything wrong. She was just trying to save lives, but no one will listen. You have to help. Please. Such a oh, being a good person. Your impertinence runs deep, Paladin. Please, there's no time. They'll kill her. Go! This can't be happening. His gaze rests upon you for a moment, then moves on. There's more blood down there than water. She nods a greeting, turns away. Free, not anymore. 